All right, so welcome everyone. We made it. Um, my name is Mike Matezzi. I have with me today um, Diego and Mertunje, two other force instructors. Uh, we'll probably be on for about an hour or so. Um, I have a bunch of different things I want to share with you. We're going to do some critiques today as well. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be other technical hiccups and hurdles that we're going to have to go through, so please bear with us. I'm just happy we, we made it, right? Lots of different things uh, that we were challenged with. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to try to do this also every Friday at the same time, so I'm hoping this will bring a little bit of enjoyment and hopefully some enlightenment to everyone's Fridays. Um, we're going to obviously talk about force. Um, I'm hoping in the future this will also become a place where we're going to inter interview other artists that are using force. Uh, we're going to do critiques, probably a little bit of philosophy. Um, and most definitely talk about drawing and do demos for you guys. And we'll probably get more and more sophisticated with this as we get better at it, right? And thank you again for, thank you again for your patience today. All right, so let's get to it, right? There's one thing I wanted to do in here. Uh, I want to talk about something high level first before we, um, we get started. Uh, let me just put these guys in here, put them away. One of the things we talk about on the website all the time uh, that I wanted to share with everyone here is this, uh, this idea. You'll find out very quickly, I don't, um, I don't type as well as I draw. Your drawing is, I think we put the word only in there, right? Is only as good as your ideas, okay? This is kind of important. Um, the reason this is important is I want you to be aware that when we look at drawings today, your guys' drawings, uh, what we're really looking at is how you think, right? And when you look at my drawings, it's basically about how I think. And anybody's drawings, anybody's mm -hmm. art. It doesn't even have to be drawing. It could be painting. Don't take for granted what you see in somebody's art, I guess is what I'm getting at. You know, and I want you all to, over these Forest Fridays, to learn a level of sensitivity um, around how to look at your own work also, right, and be able to assess your own work. We're really working here with line and the Force line, and over these Fridays we'll talk more and more about it, but I want you to be aware it's the language that we are using, right? Line is a language just as much as... Um, just as much as the alphabet's a language, right? So, um, so yeah, keep this in mind. I also have another quote I wanted to share with you. I'm gonna, instead of typing this in, I'm just gonna read it to you. Um, I spent one of the mornings this week, um, I got up really early, uh, like 5.30 in the morning, um, and as crazy as this sounds, I decided to go into a class on physics um, at that time. Um, because I keep thinking about how much I want to bring more and more of an understanding of physics to force drawing. Uh, and there was this really awesome um, quote that I want to read to you. Uh, this quote is by a physicist. His name was Max, or Max uh, Planck. And the quote is, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, right? When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, right? And um, I want, that's another big thing I think we should just try to keep in mind while we're, um, while we're drawing, right? What's happening through the act of you learning how to draw is you're also learning how to see and you're learning how to think, right? Like I have a formula in my books about the eyeball, the brain, and the hand. And when you go through that, um, merely by you getting more educated about how you're seeing the world around you, those things therefore change. In my classes, I talk about the matrix a lot, right? Because, well, first of all, I love that movie, but um, secondly, you're kind of trying to see the invisible and yet it's visible all the time. Uh, something like gravity, for instance, is a great example where you're, um, you're surrounded by gravity. Right now, we're all surrounded by gravity. It looks like it's invisible, but the symptoms of it are not, right? We're all sitting in our chairs, um, sitting at our tables or standing, and uh, gravity's pulling down on all of us, and we can see the symptoms of that at all times, right? So we want to be aware of that as well. Is there anything you guys want to add to, um, to all of that? 
I want to ask you something, Mike. Uh, uh, can you share your Photoshop screen with us on Zoom? Because uh, we're not seeing that yet. So we are delayed. Uh, you're not. What you're seeing on your. I just seen your screen on, on, on YouTube, but not on, on, on Zoom. So. Oh, I see. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, people are typing here. Consider, uh, please consider interviewing Glenn King. Of course, we are, are considering interviewing Glenn King. It's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for your work, Michael. I have just started reading you, and I enjoy so much. Uh, enjoy. Your, yeah, know. I'll definitely. And by the way, I'll need your guys' help to track the what's going on in the the text box. If there's any questions or anything, okay? Yeah, sure. I'm going to stay here uh, on point in Photoshop. So yeah, please help me out there. I enjoyed it so much so far. Anyone here good at force drawing? Mike, Mike is pretty good at force drawing. <laughs> uh, Ken. I'll so, do my best. Flowers in thread said, I just picked up two of your books via Amazon. I might be late in shipping since it's considered not essential. Oh, uh, that that's wrong. Uh, force books are essential. <laughs> uh, I was wondering what tools you're using to do your lines. We're using graphite, soft graphite. Yeah. So. To that point, um, to Diego's right, normally what we work with is pretty soft graphite if you're on pencil and paper. Um, digitally, I have a brush called the soft brush that I actually use, or the force pencil, I think is what we actually call it. Um, and it's really, it's nothing fancy. I think the goal is with a digital brush, you want to, um, what you want to do is have a brush that has um, opacity and you know, opacity based on pressure. And you also want a brush that has um, line weight, right, based on pressure. You want to get as close to reality as you can. And I, I have to say, I've been working in Photoshop for since like 1996, 1997. And I still don't think I have the same control, you know, in Photoshop that I do on a piece of paper. Mike, so. one thing you want to be careful about is nude photos. Uh, so try not to use that uh visible here well i think i made sure this thing was also only for adult not children i i quoted that earlier you know when the setting okay, up the uh, live stream uh, just just in case not to be closed down yeah no it's good here so, uh, i'm going to share i want to share this with you guys really fast um i just did this this morning in a um in a mentored meeting so i teach you know i teach through the internet through drawingforest.com through mentorship so those are one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, and this student was saying, you know, I just don't, it, it was actually a conversation around um, the topic of what we talked about with the, um, uh, with the, um, the quote today. Uh, she was saying how she's just not seeing enough, right, which I thought was awesome on her part because she really understood that this is about, you know, having the ability to see. You also need to understand what you see. So I, I did this drawing for her. Um, and, you know, this probably took about seven minutes, I would say, to draw this. Uh, and you can see how much work I had to go through to really, like, solve this pose. It's a very complex uh, pose, right? It's a lot of foreshortening. Um, there's a lot of anatomy that I was trying to put into it. Uh, and it still needs work, but at least the overall idea is there, right? Uh, and, again, if you guys have questions while I'm talking, please type them in. We're here to try and help you guys, right? So... So let's see, and I'm still trying to get over my like <laughs> my TV nerves here. Um, Marco says I got the book. My dog loves it too, and he ate the cover. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see what do I want to do. Okay, so I want to start taking a look at some of your guys' work, um, especially some of you that aren't on the website yet, and you know you're just submitting work for the first time. You want to get a sense of getting feedback from us. I know some of the people who are members on the site sent in work also, uh, so we'll try to take a look at some of them as well so you get to see what they're doing. All right, here's one. This looks like it's from our site, All right? Yes, Lulu, uh, an Apple Pencil with an iPad uh, works fine. Almost every tool will work once you understand what you're trying to say. So what my, to Mike's point, where he says, your drawing is only as good as your idea, uh, that's the quote you need to have in mind instead of, your drawing is only as good as your tool. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's get this in here. 
Okay. And let me get myself set up here to draw. So what you're seeing here is a very um, common example of what we'll see on the website from premium members or the people we mentor. Okay. Um, I came up with this process a couple of years ago. It's pretty new, that means still, right? And it's called the RAID process. Okay, R-A-I-D. Um, and it stands for uh, reference, R for reference. A is for analysis. Analyze. Uh, I is iteration. And then D is like stands for more drawing, right? It's when you have more time. So really at the beginning, most of the time, everyone is working with RAI, basically, right? RA and I. We want RAID. So what you're seeing here with this person's work is we've got our reference, right? Um, one of the, a couple of things we'll typically add in A is analysis would have a write-up, believe it or not. We actually go into writing, and this is almost like a, uh, it's almost like a task list, right? Uh, what do I want to try and accomplish in this pose, right? Um, so you already have some goals in mind. You haven't even drawn yet. And it also gives you the chance to actually take a look at the model and try to understand what's happening. You know, when you're in a live drawing session in class, um, we get into this uh, pattern of reaction, right? It's like the model draw, you know, takes a pose and immediately everyone starts drawing. No one takes a pause to try to go, okay, what's, what's happening here? You know, and how am I going to try and capture that? So typically there'd be a write-up here. We would talk about stuff like um, uh, there's all this force sweeping over to the right-hand side here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. And there's all this force sweeping up and over into the shoulder. The shoulder is the leading edge of the pose, which means it's the area of the pose that is pushing in a certain direction. Uh, that's all sweeping down into the pelvis and then down into the legs, right? Uh, and I want to be aware of the counterbalancing that is going on with the arm relative to the upper body, right? You want to be cognizant or aware of the fact that, like, where's the far, since he's leaning far right, right, since he's leaning this way, I want to be aware of where the far right edge is of his base, right? His far right edge of the base is there at the foot. Um, so you can get a sense now of, like, how much of him is over that. Now, this is only two-dimensionally. He is in a three-dimensional space, right? So I have to kind of keep that in mind, right? He's, he's standing this way, but he's going back in space this way, right? His head is probably like back here somewhere, right? It's probably like here, right? So I have to be aware of his feet relative to how much of his weight is going back in space to over here. Uh, so first of all, I, I just want you to be aware of that, right? And most of the time people, when they're, when artists are drawing, they're not thinking about this, right? We all go in there and say, okay, I, I just have to get this angle right. This looks like this. This looks like this. We're trying to copy it. Uh, and what we're trying to do is we're not trying to copy it. We're trying to understand it. Uh, and that's a big note right there. The big note there is uh, we're drawing with a sense or a goal of trying to understand what's happening. We're not trying to just like copy the model. And there's this like really fine line in between those two because there's nothing wrong with being accurate, I believe, 100% and trying to be right about what you're drawing. Um, and that sometimes can feel like copying, but the shift is I'm trying to draw accurately with a sense of understanding what I'm drawing versus me just looking and copying, looking and copying, right? Uh, yeah, we don't want to make this just about, like, if I'm going to do that, I might as well just throw a grid over him, right, and use the grid to copy him over to uh, into my drawing, right? So there's a lot of stuff to think about. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here in the A, right? It's like, okay, I want to understand how um, this model is pushing over and back, where his legs are, what the stance is, the stretching in his torso, the leading edge, right? He's going this way. His arm is counterbalancing. I want to think about the weight of his arm. This would change a lot, right? If I put like a 10 pound weight in that hand, right? He would very easily be able to swing back out of this if he wanted to. If I attached a 10 pound weight to his shoulder, that would be very different as well, right? He, he would fall over because he's, he's pretty much on the edge of his balance here. Okay, how are we doing on text here? It seems like everything's working. 
Yeah, guys. Woo, so just, lots of great I questions. Just in here. a couple of questions here, <laughs> just uh, typing down. Okay. Uh, the, the the common question that you're asking is uh, how to draw stiff poses, and the thing is, poses is in everything. Yeah. Uh, if the pose is super stiff, yeah, of course it's going to be harder to to find uh, dynamism in that pose, but it's still there. But why don't you want? Why do you want to start with a hard pose? Yeah, uh, this is really common. You, people trying to learn something uh, by getting to the most difficult and hard thing. It's like you want to start uh, karate uh, by trying to break a whole wall instead of small wood. First, start breaking a small wood or hitting the air, <laughs> and after you increase the difficulty. Same thing with drawing. Uh, go with simple poses. Uh, that you find uh, easy to find the different forces there and then go increasing the difficulty of the pose. That is why the R is the, the first letter in rate, the picking the reference. You need to find a good reference that helps you learn instead of finding a reference that kills you. <laughs> and yeah. just to quickly add something in here. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, whenever I'm drawing, I'm picking the references that really inspires me. For like, uh, for example, the reference you're seeing in here. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're picking the reference, you should be having a reason that really you know, inspires you or you're thinking in terms of or maybe force. And some other people are asking that it's uh, you know difficult to find, uh, I mean, draw stiff poses. So for those people, I want to say that, uh, you know, in stiff poses, for example, if the person is standing, you know, stays up front and you're looking at the, the per that model from front, so it becomes symmetrical. And if one of the rules in the force is symmetry kills, you know, symmetry kills force, you know, that's your, what we're after. Yeah, Marco yeah. in the, uh, thank you for that, Mertunje. I agree with you. Yeah. I think, you know, we <clears throat> very honestly, we get asked this quite a bit, um, <clears throat> almost surprising to myself how often I get asked, like, well, then how do you draw like a stiff pose, <laughs> you know, or one where somebody's not doing much of anything? I could do that. I could show that to you, and we could do that today. And it'll take you know a couple of minutes to go through that. Um, I would challenge you with, well, why would you want to do that, right? And to Mutunde's point, um, I hope that what happens here is you get inspired by seeing. I don't want to draw stiff poses, right? Like, why would I want to do that in the first place? Uh, Marco here in the chat says, um, which I agree with. I used to think that stiff poses were easy. Now I see them as lame and hard to draw. I would take maybe the word lame out of there. Um, maybe not as exciting, right? But they are harder to draw. The reason they're harder to draw, to kind of go into what Diego was saying, is because um, they're more subtle. It's not that there's no force in like a regular standing pose. It's more subtle, right? When you have something like this, there's more drama, right? And the drama is easier to... Um, interpolate right to or interpret the force of than it is somebody who's just standing straight right so you know i've done tons of turnarounds for video games in my life um you know and you have to do a front view and a back view is there a lot of force in that some areas of the body have more than others like the legs will always have rhythm but the torso is symmetrical right so yeah not much force right because force in the body the upper body and the torso is usually between the front of the body and the back of the body unless somebody is twi you know, twisting and then they're creating torque. So that rotation is pent up like power, right? It's power in the figure. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, there is nothing in the front and back. And that's how we're built. That's why, you know, when you, when you push forward or back, you're dealing with forces that are going from left to right, you know, or back to front in your body, not left to right. Left to right gets created by you twisting and turning, right? And that's how you get torque. That's how you throw a ball, for instance, right? So <clears throat> I would agree. I think Marcos is kind of spot on there. And, um, you know, you don't want to, um, not that you don't want to, it's harder to draw poses that are um, subtle, right? Much harder. Uh, this is going to be interesting. It's our first time out, and I have a ton of artists who submitted work today, and we've got the live feed going with lots of different questions <laughs> going on in there. It's I mean, almost people are trying. Mike, can I, can I say something? Just, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, th th this is funny because people are trying now to find hard things to draw. Uh, Carlos, for example, says, 
uh, what if you want to draw a corpse or a zombie? Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> right. you, you can draw a zombie. You know, a zombie could be like this. And that, that is not a, uh, and a stiff pose. It's something that is moving. It's coming right. towards us. He, he, he wants to grab you. So there are many, many different... Uh, uh, and a corpse, it shouldn't be... Uh, it, it would be still, so it won't be moving. But the position the, the corpse is, uh, it shouldn't be stiff. Here, let me... When someone falls for, from a ceiling and falls down to the floor, it always stays like this. So that is not stiff, you know? All right. So don't try to find the, the hard things to do. Uh, help yourself. I'm going to entertain you guys here for a little bit, okay? Uh, and try to take on what's going on in the chat. So here's like a front view of a figure, right? I'm just going to quickly sketch out a body. <clears throat> Uh, until they're drawing, I'm gonna answer one more question. Yeah, go ahead. That I get get a lost uh, lot of. Uh, you know, some people ask me like, uh, is four just for organic things? Like, if you want to draw a robot or something like a Transformers robot, mm, would force be there too? Yeah, great question. Um, I think like, uh, yeah, force isn't like always there <laughs> if it's moving. So even if it's mechanical, you know, basic things always stays the same. Like. If you see a profile view of a body, like force pose profile view, so you'll always get that, you know, force coming from back and to the abdomen area. And if you're drawing like a humanoid robot or something that looks, you know, resembles more human, so definitely that would be, you know, what your first strokes would be. Let me so, let me add to that to clarify, especially after going through my little physics 101 class this yeah. past week. Yeah. Um, force is not... It's not rhythm. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's where a lot of the mix up happens in this question. Someone says, you know, can I draw a robot with force? I think if you had asked me that years ago, I probably would have said uh, no, because to me, I was thinking about force more, uh, you know, more around the idea of drawing rhythms. Force to me is bigger than that and you know the main force that we're really all working with all the time and that i want you to bring to your drawings and to your thinking is gravity right like i call gravity the grandfather of force <laughs> right so you have this gravity and you're trying to understand gravity so if you were to draw a mech or a robot you still have to think about how does this thing work relative to gravity so two things are going on in there number one is i have to think about gravity and I have to think about how the thing works relative to the gravity. And maybe a third is just how does this thing work, right? Like the better industrial designers and concept artists have to take into account the function of something. So, you know, gravity deal, you know, force deals with gravity. Force deals with function, right? How things work. Machines have force, right? You're dealing with forces in machines as well. So I would say, yes, force is also in something like a mech or a robot, you know. And I think the better designed robots or mechs are the ones that really show how they have to deal with gravity, right? What are the feet or the legs designed like? Is it on treads, right? Like, how does this thing work? How is it mobile? Is it in the air? Is it on the ground? How is it dealing with gravity, right? If you leave today with anything, right, if there's one thing I would say to be aware of, it's like, Darn, I never really thought about gravity in my work and how I draw from imagination or from reference, from reality. Keep in mind that gravity affects everything. It's gravity that causes the human body to have rhythm, right? What we're really doing is we're dealing with the idea of rhythm. Our anatomy is designed to give us locomotive motion on this planet with the amount of gravity that we have. Right? If our gravity was stronger, we'd probably be shorter and more stout. If it was weaker, we might be taller and thinner. Maybe we'd look different, right? But we have this constant on this planet, which is called gravity. And gravity is so... I was reading this in the, um, uh, in the physics class I was taking earlier this week, and this really kind of blew my mind, just to give you a sense of how important gravity is. You know, keep in mind the moon, <laughs> right? It's like here we are on the planet Earth, Right? We're sitting here on the planet Earth, and we've got this giant rock sitting out there in outer space. And gravity of our planet is so strong that it's keeping this guy in a certain orbit around our planet. Right? That's how strong it is. Right? So keep that in mind when you're working. If you're designing a robot or you're drawing the figure, keep in mind the power of gravity. Right? 
So to try to answer some questions that are coming up in the chat here, um, here's a front view of a figure. These are, this is in all the books that I've written and in the website. It's what I call a front view template, right? So this is a front view. And <clears throat> you'll notice when it comes to rhythm, rhythm is basically, here, let's, let's talk about rhythm really quick. So rhythm is two directional forces, so 2D plus one applied force equals rhythm, right? One rhythm. Believe it or not, I'm not a fan of math, and yet I keep writing these things that look like algebraic <laughs> equations. But I try to simplify it. I want you to just be aware. 2D plus 1A, 1A equals 1R, right? What does that mean? So this is a directional force. This is a directional force. These two are connecting. Their connection is applied force. So this is 1D. This is 1D. This is 1A, okay? This, as a system, we equals 1R, right? This is one rhythm that we just created, you see? Now, if you, the reason I share this with you is if you take that understanding and you try to bring it over to this front figure, you've all been asking, like, well, how do I draw, like, a stiff figure, right? So here's kind of a stiffish figure. You'll notice there's no rhythm in this body um, above the waist, right? because it's all symmetrical, right? Below the waist, we, thank goodness, have symmetry in the legs, right? So you start seeing rhythm, right? If we took uh, the screen right leg, you'll see that the leg goes from the outside of the thigh, it goes into the inside of the knee, and it goes back outside the calf, and then it goes inside ankle, and then outside foot, and then finally comes all the way around, and there's the heel. So this is the full system, right? Here's the edge of the crotch, right? So outside thigh, inside knee, outside calf is a system. It's got a couple of rhythms in it, right? You'll notice there's a rhythm right here because we're going from one directional force. We're applying ourselves to the next one, which is the knee, and then we come back out. Up here in the upper body, it's not really happening, not in a very clear way, right? We would have to extend this out like this and say, you know what? Um, the power of rhythm in the body uh, is in the side view, right? So that would say force is going from here to here, right? To the stomach, you see? So it's going from the back into the lower stomach, right? This is the rhythm of the side view. And then it actually goes up into the neck, uh, like so, and then sweeps up here like this into the head. That's a little exaggerated. Head's more here, okay? so you'll notice what you don't see in the front, you do get in the side. And where it really starts to happen, again, is, uh, is when somebody even like creates torque or turn in their figure, okay? The other thing, um, there was mention of zombies and stuff like that, right? You can easily create something like a zombie and have, give it tons of force, as Diego was saying, just based on the pose. So that's not a problem either. I think what I'd like to share with you, though, is at an abstract level, um, a straight line, the, the more straight lines you have in your drawing, uh, the more stiff the drawing is going to be. Okay? It's that simple. All right? And the more curves or S's you have, right, the more fluid the drawing is going to be. All right? So just keep this in mind. If you're someone who draws with lots of straight lines and you're like, I don't understand why my drawings are so stiff and they don't have any force, it's because you're drawing with straight lines. Straight lines don't have clear fluidity in them, flu you know, clear rhythm in them. It's not to say it's good or bad. I just want you to be aware that's going to not give you the opportunity to draw rhythm, right? Um, okay, so let's get rid of this. hope everyone got to see that. Um, I'm going to erase this, and let's go back in here. I want to take a look at some artwork. So we, you know, we were looking at this artist. Mike, here, here's the question, the most common question ever yeah. people ask. That is, force always is exaggeration of a pose? Yeah, great question, right? Do you want to, you want to field that one, Diego? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, no, that's not uh, a need of getting exaggerated. You can exaggerate anything that you understand what is happening. If you want to exaggerate something, you need to know what to exaggerate to don't break the pose. So force give you the understanding and the way of thinking to be able to exaggerate a pose. 
but you need to do it? No, you don't. You can be as real and as realistic as you want in your drawing. Yeah. Uh, that's a decision you make, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my two cents, you know, what is force? Uh, yeah, people always ask me, like, your drawings are so exaggerated, right? Like, force is always, you know, for me, it's like self-expression thing. So, you know, it's always based upon that first thought that your drawing is only as good as your ideas. So if you're, like, able to put down your ideas and, you know, make the audience feel, you know, what the model is feeling, so I think it's a successful drawing. You know, it doesn't need to have, you know... <laughs> Like what people think, you know, forceful line, forceful drawing is just like, you know, just attack it and, you know, be wild with it. It's not like that, you know. So, yeah, force is just a self-expression thing for me. And you will find that too if you're, you know, continue doing that. Just uh, basically have more empathy with the model and you're good to go. Yeah. If we can answer Carlos' question, what if you are learning traditional figure or portrait drawing, how do you get likeness? without losing force. So if you think Carlos in caricatures, are caricatures uh, losing likeness? No, because you're understanding what you're exaggerating and keeping the, the previous answer. So you don't need to exaggerate. Right. So if you're not exaggerating and you are uh, honestly looking what you're looking, then you won't lose likeness. You will still keep force and your drawing won't look stiff. So it doesn't matter uh, the, the way you're learning, if you're learning traditional or whatever, if you understand what you're drawing, then your drawing will look, uh, will show what you're trying to communicate, right? Yeah, I would add, um, when you draw somebody's face, uh, in general, it's going to be stiffer than the body because you're drawing a skull, <laughs> right? Unless somebody's has an expression, right? If I just sit here with my face in sort of a zero state and I put no expression in it, uh, it still has forces in it because of the directions on how it's, it's built, but I can put even more force into it with some kind of exaggerated expression. It's, al it's almost the same thing with the body. Like the body can stand there still or start creating more drama and it would have more force in it. Um, to sum up what both guys said, what Diego and Mertunje said, uh, you can draw as accurately as you want or as cartoony as you want. It's up to you um, what range, where on the range you're going to be. Um, they still can be totally forceful drawings. It's not about creating heightened drama. It's about you learning to see that there is energy out in the world, right? That you're understanding that forms and design the shape of your head is designed to work a certain way. If your nose slopes in or out, it's pushing curves and angles in different directions and that you start to try to see the world through something as abstract as a sense of force. And, you know, when we have a figure drawing like the one we're looking at here. Um, this has a lot of drama. It's a lot easier to see force in. Something like the face, yeah, it is trickier. You know, there's more construction in there and you've got to really be aware of how am I getting force out of this, right? It's not, it's, it's more difficult, you know, and that's something we would learn over time. But it's a great question. It comes up again all the time. Um, I want to answer this one by Whelan. What would the difference be between force drawing and gesture drawing, right? In gesture, we tend to draw in short period of time, for example. Yeah, I think the main difference is, you know, a force drawing can be a 30-second pose, Whelan, or it can be a five-hour pose, you know, five hour drawing, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I think most art education talks about gesture, like you said, is like, here, let's just get the gesture, react to the model and try to get something done in a minute or two, um, which is fine. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are doing a gesture drawing through the filter of force, right? It doesn't mean that you're looking at the model with your mind's eye, uh, with a focus on understanding how they work and how they move, right? I could do a gesture drawing as an example here. I could say, here, I'm in this class, and the teacher's telling me to do gesture drawing, and make believe this is the reality of the model. So I'll do a gesture, and I'll just be like, oh, my God, I think, I think the model is kind of like this. Right? That might be my gesture drawing. Right? So that's not a force gesture drawing. 
that's just me kind of scribbling around the page and trying to have some response to, um, you know, to the model, right? A force gesture drawing uh, would look something more like this. I would say, okay, the model's pushing and leaning into their back. I could see the rhythm and fluidity pushing into their stomach, right? Uh, this leg is probably going to be uh, an outside thigh, inside knee, outside calf. This one is also an outside thigh, inside knee, outside calf. I'm looking at the balance of how this is pushing back relative to the figure pushing this way. Right, I'm going to come up here to the arm and over. I'm going to understand the rhythm of the shoulder to the arm, and it's going to go up and over. And I want the neck and head flowing from the back. So that's a force gesture drawing. Right? So force is gesture, but not all gesture is force. Force is more than gesture. Force is how things work. And it's because of gravity. And the human body is designed to deal with that. But you are right, Marcos, on not all gesture is force. <laughs> That's true. Euron said... Yeah, it's basically uh, just a action of line, line of action, what they call it in animation, but yeah. you know, it's not force. Yeah, right? line, line of action... Line of that's a great question or of topic, Matunje. Line of action starts to go towards force. It's just a little oversimplified. It's not based on anatomy. I'm trying yeah. to work with real anatomy. I could say the the line of action of this pose might be something like this, All right? Uh, actually, the problem with the, the line of action, what I feel is, uh, you know, you can fit like dozens of poses in the same line of action. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, because it's not anatomical, right? Yeah. It's, it's too no, abstract. It's just like you're simplifying pose in one stick, noodle stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good, I have to say, it's not a bad place to start. What I like about the line of action is it starts to teach artists to see things in an abstract way. And I think that is profound, you know? Yeah. Because most, most artists, when they're, when they're learning how to draw, and I've been there, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't come into the world knowing how to draw force. I didn't know anything about it. Um, really? Yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, uh, you know, we all learn to copy, right? Like I learned because I would draw comic books as a kid. And then when you go into high school, you judge your work based on like how accurate it is. Because as a teenager, you start to see the world more accurately. And most teenagers like to copy and they feel like they're successful when they have something that looks photographically real, right? So you get mired in this space of, um, I judge my work based on if it looks like a photograph or not, right? Um, and to finally go from there and maybe go to an art school or find online that somebody's talking about line of action and you start seeing that abstract, I think that's awesome. You know, like that's a step in the right direction. I think our job as artists is not to sit and copy, you know. It used to be Xerox machines that did that job and now you have a phone in your pocket, right, a computer in your pocket. You can take a picture or something, right? You can even put a filter on it, make it look like a drawing. I think our job is to interpret you know, the abstract and try to understand. And through the process of doing that, you get to amazing drawings, you know, and then you decide in that space what you're interested in. You know, do you want to push? Uh, do you want to be super real? Uh, underneath all of that, to, I saw Yoron mentioned in here earlier, it's really about understanding, which is what I talked about at the very beginning of all this, you know. So let's take a look at this drawing for a few minutes. Um, I think um, there was also a comment about, you know, is drawing have to be then fast? No, it doesn't have to be fast. A forced drawing doesn't mean you have to get done in 30 seconds. I mean, my space, my personal space is usually anywhere between 30 seconds and like five minutes, let's say. But I've done two-hour drawings. I just don't like doing that. It's just not my thing. If it's your thing, that's great. More power to you. I'm just very impatient, you know. Um, so let's take a look at this drawing. Uh, it's pretty good. All right, it's got some good rhythms and forces in it. Uh, we can see uh, the amount of push that's sweeping in here. I feel like there's um, a response that's going on here. This person has a pretty good eye, right? So you can see how it's going like this. This is what I would call an S torso, by the way. All right, so talking about the torso itself, the abstract of this torso is it's going from the back and across to the stomach, right? And then around through the legs. I always go down and through along the bottom of the crotch, because you want to think about the whole pelvis, and then up into the hip like this, you see? 
So we're sweeping like this. All right, and I always like to try to come down to the opposite side of the rib cage. So the full S, the abstract of it, looks like that. You see? So, and that's working in here pretty well. I would say for this person, um, you're doing pretty well. You're doing pretty well in the torso. You got things moving around. You have a little bit of form. I would connect more. What I mean by that is don't be shy about having to only draw um, the edges of the figure. If this is an S torso, notice over here I'm crossing over, right? I'm crossing from the back to the stomach and pelvis. Draw your way over there, you know? Allow your lines to just sweep over there, right? And then feel what it's like, you know, to smash into this hip and come down, right? I love driving <laughs> my car through here. So, you know, I think of this as like, right, and then I drive my way over and smash into this hip, right? There's like a guardrail here, and there's like an ocean sitting out here, and there's mountains, and this is all a giant lake. And over here is this um, guardrail, right? And that car smashes into that, hits that hip and the stomach, and then falls and sweeps down into here. So there's a lot of physics going on in my head, and that's why I use metaphors all the time. It's like, oh, I'm driving, I'm skiing, I'm skating, I'm riding a bike, right? Anything that gives me um, acceleration and velocity and I'm like moving in a direction over time is what I'm experiencing as I'm drawing. So my point here is connect, right? Try and connect. So the other places you can connect in this drawing are here in the legs, right, in the knees. You can see you're not connecting. So I would say come down the thigh and allow yourself to draw over across to find, this is why it's called directional force, by the way, because it's directing you exactly to where the next place is. You see? So directional force applies itself. When the directional force finishes, finishes its moment on the contour and it travels across from you know, whatever this is, let's say it's the leg, right? From the thigh to the knee, and the knee is over here. This moment right here becomes applied force, and it applies itself over to the next location, and then finally smashes into this next place, right? Boom, I smash into the knee, and then I sweep back out, right? I connect over here and smash into the calf, so we go back to the drawing, right? And it hits like this, you see? So now I've got really clear rhythm, and we want rhythm. Why do we want rhythm? Because rhythm is the system of forces affecting masses in the body to create balance, right? So, you know, a very simple abstract again, we have the center line of balance. Force is pushing this way because it's affecting this mass. Right now, if I stopped right there, this drawing would fall to the left. So what does it do? It applies itself across the center of gravity. Right? And over here is the next mass that force is pushing out, and it starts balancing itself. Right, So this is what we're looking for, everyone. We want to find balance in the figure. And if you can do that by creating rhythms, this is one uh, rhythm, by the way. The rhythm is big. right? And because it's big, you start to understand the whole body really quickly. Right? And ge the Germans call this gestalt. Right? I'm half German, so I love saying that word. <laughs> Right, so gestalt is what we're looking for. And gestalt means understanding the wholeness of something. Instead of getting caught up in the details, you want to understand the, the full picture, right? So that's what we're doing, right? So when I look at this leg, I don't have the reference here, so it's a little tough to say if it's front to back or outside, inside, outside. But let's just say for argument's sake, it's outside, inside, outside, right? So that would do the same thing. I'd go from the outside of the thigh, I would hit on the inside knee here, and I'm going to push myself back out the calf. You see, and now I've got really clear rhythms in the legs that are working, that's hooking me up to the torso, right, which is getting me all the way up here, and then I can connect this arm, which would come off the top of the back from the arm into the elbow and then back out to the head. So look at the travel we've made, everyone, right? We've gotten from the hand through the body all the way down to the foot. There it is, right? We have an understanding now of the full pose. That is a big part of learning how to draw with force, right? Is you're trying to understand the body. There's so much art education out there that's just going to teach you simple um, structure or even some good line. But most of the instruction is in around structure. 
And the irony, I think to me, the irony to that, thank you, by the way, whoever sent this in, thank you very much. Great drawing. Um, the irony to the figure drawing that's out there in the teaching, and hopefully most of you know this line. Uh, let's see, command D. The line is form <coughs> follows function. We can take this word function and replace that with force, because force creates function. And it says form follows function. So guess what, right? That means this goes up here, right? Function first, then form, right? And that goes for everything. Everything on this planet has been designed through an understanding of what it's supposed to do. And therefore, it becomes the thing that it is, like a car right? Cars can't come out of the idea of rolling on wheels and carrying people around from one place to another. So the form of the car has been designed around that, right? And then through the trajectory of history of the, you know, a Model T to a modern automobile got more and more aer aerodynamic, right? Like cars got faster, right? So all of a sudden the design of the car starts changing based on its function. It's going at higher speeds. We want to create aerodynamics. It doesn't work the other way around. See, so that's a big thing to really swallow, to understand. It's like, wow, my shoulder, I'm not going to draw the deltoid because I'm drawing the deltoid. I want to draw the deltoid with an understanding of its, it's on this part of my body because of its job. What is it doing? I want to draw the doing. Through the act of drawing the doing, you actually draw the thing. The thing starts to show up through the act of you drawing what it's doing. Right. And I know that sounds insane because even saying it today, it sounds insane, but that's how it works. You know, and that's that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing at drawingforce.com. That's what Diego Mertunje and Swenley, who will be with us next week. That's what we are doing. We're trying to have you guys shift your minds from drawing a world of nouns, right, objects, to drawing from a world of verbs, things that are happening, drawing actions. And not only that they're actions, but you understand the doing of those actions. And by drawing the doing, the things show up. Of course, I'm going to draw the rib cage, right? That's the noun of it. But what I first see is I see this abstraction of the human body as a thing being pushed and pulled around. You see, so I see, I'm not going to call this rib cage. I'm not even going to call it body. I'm not going to call it anything. I'm not even going to call it this person at this moment. What I see is this thing is pushing this way. Right? They're pushing this way, and they're pushing this way. And as I draw the pushing, the force pushing right and left, the rib cage starts to appear. You see, and that, that's a big differentiator you know, on what we're trying to teach with you guys learning force, right? Mike, there's like a zillion questions on the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we, we have reached uh, one hour already of, uh, All right. of streaming. So yeah, uh, the streams. I gotta get going. Okay. So first of all, I, I want to thank, uh, in name of Mike, uh, Swenly, Richard J and I, for you being here. It's really, it's really good to see that many people interested in. in yes. Sports. Yes. Thank you, everyone. So I, I hope to see you uh, next Friday here, uh, and thank you once again for joining. Thank you, Mike, for sharing all this. Yeah. And thanks, Richard J, and thanks, Swenly, that you're gonna be watching <laughs> someday. <laughs> Uh, and okay, so goodbye, guys. Uh, stay safe, stay at home, and thank you for being here. Goodbye, yes. guys. See you, Diego. Bye. Okay. So I'm gonna I'll stay on a few more minutes. God, it just shows you how fast an hour goes by, right? We could do this for six hours today, quite honestly, and we still wouldn't get done. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. I want to, and you know, as you can see in my Photoshop document here, man, I got a ton of other submissions. Uh, there's just a lot of work that came in here. Uh, some people who are on the website, some people who are brand new. Let's kind of just kind of, I want to be able to at least skip through some of this stuff quickly and just see if there's anything that call, gets called out. Um, see if I can help anyone pretty fast. So this artist, uh, Chiku, pretty good. I think you're on the path. Watch the straightness, right? Talking about stiffness. Uh, this arm would be so easily fixed by, instead of it being a straight line, giving it some gentle arc, let's say, from the shoulder. Force usually travels on the elbow side of the arm. 
and just putting a simple curve in here, right, would give her, you know, your um, character here more fluidity. And then you can get that nice rhythm into the wrist and out the fingers, right? Just the subtlest thing. This is what I would call a C torso, by the way. So this is all about this curve. Let the curve go down through the front of the stomach to the crotch and to the hips, right? So you can see it's one big idea like that, right? Good rhythms in the legs. This is really nice. Yeah, you're, you know, you're at the beginning of tasting what this is like. So good job. As you all know, I can't. Uh, actually, yeah, go ahead. I'm just remember, she's just uh, she's a friend of mine. Oh yeah, yeah. she's doing well. Yeah, that's good. This is oh. Dennis. So Dennis is on DrawingForce.com. He's a premium member there. It's a great example of someone with excellent line control as a way of describing their ideas, right? So this is Dennis's work. Look at the kind of line he's using. He's using the force line. He's using something I call soft touch, which means you you kind of gradually build the line up you know, to really feel the power of it. And it gives you time to adjust. Um, so there's a lot of that going on here. And you get a sense of Dennis is really trying to understand, you know, the pushing in the shoulder and the tension in the arm. I'd say, Dennis, if you are here and watching, the arm should curve the other way. I think it's not bowing that way. I would probably bow slightly the other way to almost a straight down because what's the point of the arm here? The arm is really supporting the weight of the body. The other hand is in the back, right? Holding up on the chair back. But I think I would push this arm uh, this way. So here's the far shoulder and here's the close shoulder. And I think I would do this. I don't think he's hyperextending or pushing his arm in enough to get us to curving the whole arm the other way. You know, and there's a lot of stress obviously going on in the bottom of the hand there. And, you know, we're here and then the torso is like, you know, swinging its way over, um, over that arm, right? So this is a C torso again, folks, right? A lot of bending going on in it. And this is pushing up that's happening in this shoulder because of what we can't see behind the back. And there's a lot of force driving down into here, right? Soft touch, by the way, I was talking about um, lots of times I'll knock Photoshop down to 30 or 40% on the brush. And it gives me the chance to feel stuff out, you see? Like, oh, I want to feel that force pushing into the line. So I'll do it over and over. It gets darker naturally. And I'm getting to, like, build up my, mo my momentum into it, you see? Nice job, Dennis, as always. And thanks for submitting. Um, this is Dennis's as well. <clears throat> I want to try to take a look at some people who are not on the site, just totally new folks. Um, some of these guys are on the site. Eric, thank you for submitting work. So this is new, right? I don't know this person. At least I don't think I do. Um, so what's going on here, right? Abstractly, um, this drawing itself feels stiff because there's a lot of straight lines in it and it doesn't feel like then there's a tension to the body being drawn as a whole, right? Um, so it's like, what is she doing? You know, she's sitting up like this, right? She's probably bending her back ever so slightly against the wall, right? Clothing is tough too, by the way, and you have a drawing with tons of clothes on it, right? All this drapery. So I wouldn't do that at the beginning of trying to draw force. I'd say try to stick with people who are not wearing that much clothing, right? But here's like the general idea. She's leaning back gently against the wall. It's pushing up into her shoulders. Her neck and her head are going to have rhythm off of the back. I'm being very general, you can see here, just for the speediness of showing you how it's working, right? Her leg is coming down this way. It's hanging. I want to think about the hanging, right? The arms, notice they're very straight, right, on both sides. So it doesn't feel like the arm is coming off the shoulder and hanging its way down into the hand, right? The, again, there's a big difference between a straight line and a very slightly curved line. So for whoever this is, uh, thank you for submitting, and I would say watch your angularity. See here, you have the subtle curve in the arm, and it actually starts to give it more forcefulness even though it's very subtle, you know? And you want to think about the bigger system of what the pose is, right? Uh, let's see, let's go through a couple more here. I'm just gonna crawl around. There's a drawing with a marker, I think. Yeah. Man, this guy, Jordan, right? Oh, I think Jordan, you might have reached out to me on Instagram, right? 
Um, man, you got some courage, first of all. <laughs> I love that you're grabbing a marker and you're just like, Rah, I'm going to get in there and draw. <laughs> it takes a lot of guts. And I, I love that, personally. I love the guts of it. Um, I think that it's great to draw from a place of courage, not fear. I think it takes courage to do it, right? So I love that you did that. But when I look at the drawing holistically, I don't see a clear sense of that rhythm and fluidity going through the body. You did capture a little bit, excuse me, a little bit of um, a little bit of this like upward push in the shoulder. If that's pushing up, my guess is, you know, all the weight that's going on here is hanging down. And I think I need more clarity there. And then the rear end and pelvis, they just kind of feel separated in a, like, you know, they're attached, but just like stuck on. The trick here would have been to say something like, okay, the shoulder is pushing up, right? And it's mm -hmm. coming down the arm to the hand. And there would have been weight in the hand. And then there would have been all this hanging of the, you know, the, the rest of the body, the torso, and then to draw through to feel how the rear end in the leg, probably down here is my guess, is touching the ground, right? And this is what I call a bridge, by the way, right? Because it's like a suspension bridge. We're pushing up here and we're holding on somewhere over here. I don't know if it's the hip or the leg, but the rest of this is hanging, 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 right? And I don't, it's hard to get that story out of this. I don't see that function yet, you know? Pen, I would stay away from in the beginning, everyone, just because it's immediate. Again, it's not impossible to draw force with any of these tools, by the way, but it's just making your job harder. This is nice. It's got some good forces. It feels like the body's connecting. It's very shaped out, um, but most of the shapes are pretty good. I like seeing all the work uh, underneath it. Yeah, are you going to say something, Rutunjay? No, nothing. I just like the guts of this person, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Like at the very yeah, very first stage is not in fear. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that will bring him, you know, ahead of everyone. Yeah. I would agree. Fear. This is Kyle. Welcome, Kyle. I know Kyle uh, personally. Thanks for sending in your work. Um my first note, of course, Kyle, would be I'd probably stay away from the pen. I'd probably try to work on, you know, the pencil work. Um, you are getting some fluidity going from the back to the pelvis, but I'd say most importantly here, right, with what we, everyone has talked about today and what we've discussed, one of the main things, uh, another main thing I want you to walk away with today, right, is balance, right? So when I look at this, I'm like, oh man, this model feels like she's going to fall over, right? So something's going on here. Now, there is a difference in men and women. A lot of people like to argue me on this, but, you know, center of gravity in women is lower. It's usually about here, and in men, it's higher up, right? So her center of gravity is low, and it is over here. So maybe, maybe this is possible. As a man myself, when I look at this, I'm like, whoa, I would never be able to do that. I'd be falling on my back, right? But maybe, maybe this is okay, right? I would recommend for you, um, Kyle, uh, work inside of this more, you know, get the turning edges in there, get some of the construction, right? Try to get some of the form, build out all this stuff. So besides trying to get to that clean line, I think you're getting to the clean line too fast. I think that's really what I'm trying to get to here, right? The clean line, I think you're getting it too quick. It needs more work underneath it, you know, to get to a place of trying to organize it and clean it up this quickly. Um, let's see. I think you sent in a couple of other ones. Also, if there's a cloth thing, you can, you know, just go see through it, you know, kind of turn on your extra visions and yeah, yeah just try to draw through it first of all, and then use the cloth. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. And that's why we normally recommend not dealing with the clothes, but if you can, to Mertenje's point, put on your Superman x-ray eyeballs, right? And see if you can get through. <laughs> Um, this is Kyle's too. I'm going to show him a real quick thing here, and that is for all of you, um, I call the turning edge the edge on, a, on the edges on boxes, right? So if this was a cube, this is the turning edge. This is these are all turning edges. Those three. So the turning edge on the leg is in here somewhere, right? And that tells me the difference between the side and the back. You see, I think it's good practice to get turning edges and cross contours in there. Do they slow down force? Yeah, I'm like. I'm like chopping it up. The, the turning edge is not because I'm flowing with the body, but the cross contours, it's almost like putting speed bumps in the figure. 
But I usually have students go through this just to get some basis around structure, you know. You're welcome, Kyle. Um, all right, so let's see. I'm going to skip up here, and then I think we're going to head out, folks. Otherwise, we'll be on all day long. <laughs> and, I, and I have to eat. I'm starving. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. This must be someone on the site, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, it's Tom. Tom just started on the site, actually. So Tom just began, and, man, right out of the gate, like, great job, right? This is a great example for all of you to see what we're doing on the website. Tom's a new member. And, uh, yeah, look at how he's flowing through the bodies. Notice at the beginning, it's not only important what you draw, it's also important what you don't draw. You don't want to get caught up in a lot of extra noise and extra thoughts, right? And remember, your drawing is only as good as your ideas. And the ideas we're looking for are forces and rhythms, right? So you can see that's what Tom is doing here. He's trying to find the system of rhythm to understand how um, this model is posing, right? How is he balanced? How is he standing? Think about that leg in the front taking on the brunt of weight of the upper body, right? And the hanging of the arm down that way, the head that way, and then he's counterbalancing with his other leg and his other arm, right? Yeah, Tom's doing awesome. I would agree, Scott. He's just kicking butt, right? General question. Let's see what he's got here. Um, where is the top end of the torso in the rib cage pelvis relationship? I have a tendency to extend to the shoulders and neck, but I feel like I end up with a big chest as a result. Yeah, no, you're doing great with what you're doing. It's literally, you know, he's asking, like, what's the top edge of the, the structure, basically. I kind of see it as it's almost really like the top of the, the rib cage here, you know. And then that hooks me up to the shoulder, and that would hook me up to the arm. You know, it, it's not necessarily the trapezius. If you know, if you drew somebody with like huge traps, right? Let's say this is the torso, and some guy's got like monster shoulders, right? Like the Hulk. It's more about hitting here. I think I'm hitting here, not here so much. I want to hit this and understand the effects of force on the rib cage, right? And at the bottom, you want to get along the bottom of the pelvis, all the way down to the bottom of the crotch, right? So it's, it's like what you're doing. You're doing fine in that area. All right, let's get one more here at the top. Yoran is also um, somebody on the website, just to share with you guys, he's been doing some really great work. Um, so you can see all of the force and fluidity and how he's working here. For those of you that are joining me for the first time on YouTube, you can see some of the work that's happening on the site, right? Yeah, some awesome stuff going on, trying to understand the pushing and pulling. Oh, and he did these blind, so that's interesting. Blind means you're drawing the figure without looking at the page, right? You draw only when you look at your subject, not at the piece of paper. Maybe we'll get that, we'll get into that maybe in the weeks to come. Um, but yeah, very good job, Yoran. Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, everyone, I think I'm going to close it here. Um, well, let me see. I just don't, I just want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can grab maybe a question or two out of the chat that I didn't get to. Um, oh, my wife's eating up my lunch. If we draw with force, shall we copy too much your style or how we can have your own style with force? Yes, great question. Force is <laughs> not about style, folks. Force is something that already exists. I'm just trying to teach you to see it, okay? You can take it and manipulate it however you want. There's some of the best character designers and comic book artists, fine artists out there, people I know I've taught are using force, and their work does not look like my work, right? I'm me, and they are them, but they know that it's out there. It's out in the world, and then they use it in their own personal work how they want to, you know? So excellent question, and I think I'll close on that. This is a great way of closing today. Force is not style. It's reality. Okay, I'm trying to show you another level of reality, something that you probably are not aware of yet. And I'm going to be here every Friday with you guys now trying to understand it. Ratunjay is going to be here, Diego and Swenling, we're all going to be talking about this. We're going to bring in guest speakers and talk about their work, artists that are using force, right? So you really start to see it's not purely style. It goes across all styles. I want to first of all thank all of you for your patience um, in the delay today in the start. We were racing around here on the back end, <laughs> sweating bullets, hoping that we can get this thing up and running. I kept thinking, ah, oh, I'm going to have to push this to Saturday at the same time. Like, it's not going to work today. And we made it. Um, thank goodness to Diego. Um, so he really helped on the tech side. He's our technician. Um, 
And, uh, and I want to thank you for showing up. You know, we got a good, um, good crowd today. Uh, it's our first time out, and I just want to keep building this and building this and build a lot of momentum around it. My goal, my goal is to spread the word on force. I want all of you to be able to see what I see and realize that it's another level of truth. And then you can decide how you're going to use it in your own work. Okay? So thank you, everyone. Take care. Uh, thank you for coming and listening for such a long period of time. I appreciate your um, interest, and I'm here to do my best to help you see, okay, and understand. So thanks again, and take care. Everyone. Yeah, thank you, Murtunjay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. See you next Friday, guys. Yeah, see you.